In Clintonville, a small town suburb of Columbus, Ohio, on Indianola Avenue sits a small, independently owned movie theater called Studio 35. What makes this theater special in relationship to maybe some of the larger uh, current corporate theaters that are in the community is in a nutshell it's the history. This place has been around since 1938 continuously running in this community and patrons uh, continue to come like I mean one of the best things is people coming in and saying you know I used to uh, my, my first date was here in 1952 you know it's like the coolest thing ever opening on February 17 1938 studio 35 was originally called the Indianola which showed the big Hollywood films of that era during the 50s and 60s it changed focus showing non-mainstream films such as art house films. Despite many changes, the theater continued to survive. In 2008, Eric Brambig and his wife Rita bought the theater and became the sole owners. There are only so many single screen theaters that survived uh, TV, that survived the invention of VHS. Um, all the little tiny neighborhood theaters, many of them struggled to survive. And there's still a few that are out there. There's still a few that are out there doing it, but we're, we're special because we're part of that legacy. We're still here and we're still very, very uh, uh, dedicated to continuing to just be a theater and do what we do. And it's all because, again, of the community that surrounds us, it supports us. Um, I think another thing is, I think I remember hearing um, over, reading or hearing a patron once say that it's uh, the fun of going to a dive bar. Uh, have you ever been to a dive theater? And while I will say we are great, we're clean, you know, there's nothing funky about the place. It's funky in just the right way. And um, that, that's, that it has its own unique personality and style. That is what, uh, it, it's not that like sanitized corporate sort of thing. Uh, that that's really another thing that makes her really really special why I love her so much. She has so much personality I wouldn't say that I keep coming here like I'm drawn here like the zombies to the mall and gone to yeah. dead But it's a neighborhood thing. It's an independent and you know I'd rather come here than go to the Lenox Center ever since they uh, Got the sound system and, and the screening, you know to a, a higher quality. It's just this efficient to see a movie here as it is at the uh, mall plaque. Fire spoon, tree, projector, see that, 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 and that. So this right here is one reel, so these come in reels and we put them all together. So one, two, three, four, five reels. We splice them, put them together. 24 of these per second is what makes real life on the screen. Right, otherwise it's too fast or too slow. So those go through here, right? Goes through there 24 frames per second. Each frame stops and continues on. One aspect that makes Studio 35 so unique is the selling of alcohol. Oh wow, the alcohol sales thing, um, honestly, I don't want to start Urban Legends, but I'm pretty sure Studio 35 was the first movie theater in the United States to get a liquor license, and I think that was clear back in the 60s. I don't remember the exact year, but uh, that's something that we've been doing forever. And uh, now it was a pretty limited liquor license for a long time. We recently had got the green light from our community to up our liquor license, so we actually have a, a full bar now. We didn't used to have that. But um, um, it has been uh, an interesting and important component to keeping the place running, honestly, when we're talking about the uh, corporate competition and things of that nature. So The owners continue to market their theater as independent, different, and family-owned, which keeps their staff relatively small. We have... Um, the staff that kind of ebbs and flows depending on what business needs are, to be completely honest. There's probably a core of six of us that are here a lot. There's two guys that are here constantly, John and Casey are here all the time. And then the rest of us, you know, kind of, um, you know, 
make sure those guys get nights off um, and, and kind of keep the place running. But there's a whole lot of other uh, people. I'm going to say that the extended Studio 35 family, there's probably another, like a total, if like you put all of us in a room, there's probably like 15 to 20 of us. Um, and sometimes we have special events that are really, really enormous and they take a lot of bodies to make sure everything's running smoothly. And so you'll see all of our faces eventually if you haven't seen us before. Something that attracts many patrons are the events that Studio 35 holds, which corporate theaters do not offer, such as local indie screenings, classic movies, and live broadcast events. Yeah, we do all kinds of different things. Um, the owners are very, very big into uh, green politics, so we do a lot of environmental documentaries. They're very, very into um, supporting like animal rights, so we do like a lot of uh, fundraisers and things for uh, the Franklin County Dog Shelter, I believe, is like one of the things that we do a lot of stuff for. But we do other things too. Um, tonight, for example, uh, Grand House Horrors is uh, a, a group of guys that are really, really passionate about horror film and so we're going to do the original Romero Dawn of the Dead tonight and we'll do that consistently for like you know a couple of months um, we um, are doing a summer kids series this summer you know so that during the day so that we're supporting our families too we also do um, uh, like anything that you can watch on your TV that's a big sporting event we actually have the rights to screen here as well I've just been like ready to cash in all my, you know, loser fanboy chips on a Saturday night to see Thor, or uh, Thor, or what's his name again? Thor. Thor, Thor right. Um, you know, now we're really just sitting through this to get to Dawn of the Dead. Uh, well, it's, it's a enjoyable place. It's a really unique place. And I always have fun when I come here. And I always come with friends, drink beer, watch a good movie. And no list of Studio 35's events would be complete without the mention of one of the most popular attractions there. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. I first saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I think, in like the late 70s. Rocky Horror Picture Show is something that is, of course, this like cult phenomena that has never, ever stopped. And that's something else we're really proud to be a home for uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. We show that the first Saturday of every month and I don't think that's ever gonna change, so. As old as the building is, many customers and staff believe the theater is home to some paranormal activity. Well, I would say that any building that's been around as long as Studio 35 has been definitely has some vibes going on. A lot of patrons over the years have seen things, have felt things they can't explain. We've actually had multiple groups of ghost hunters go through here and record things. Um, I have to admit, I'm very, very open to the paranormal. I would love for one of these entities to come up and say, hey, Hall, what's up? But they haven't done that yet. But you will be the first to know yes, if they do. <laughs> well, I can't speak for the community as a whole. I actually grew up in Clintonville, like just about six blocks away. So I can speak to it from that kind of personal standpoint in the sense that, um, it's a great place to come and see your neighbors. It's a great place to come and sort of escape. Um, it's a great place to come if you have your own project you've been working on. Um, I think that's one of the coolest things is when we do like little indie events and things like that to support the creative activity in the community. Um, we try really, really hard to be good neighbors. Um, we do attract a lot of people sometimes, and we are in a residential neighborhood, so we try really, really hard to make sure that everybody in the neighborhood is like, be uncomfortable with the activity that we have going on here, but I think it's an uh, it's the inclusion of everyone that kind of helps keep everything balanced. <laughs>